We continue our Senior Moment series with our print partners at USA Today, looking ahead to next month when the first baby boomers turn 65. As we get older, a popular way to keep our minds fresh is to do puzzles like crosswords or Sudoku. Neurologist Dr. Alan Masaryk is here to tell us how much these activities really help. Good morning. Good morning, Harry. What, oh, when we're doing a puzzle, when I'm doing the Times crossword, what's going on in my brain? Well, as you said, all of these uh, puzzles do help to some degree, and we are estimating that about 78 million of us baby boomers right. are going to be entering the mid-60s by next year. So this is a big problem that right. we're going to have. And we all want to maintain memory. Sure. So puzzles, crossword puzzles, playing cards, doing various word games, right. Sudoku, are all very useful. The, uh, what, what, in what way? Well, what happens is the brain is what we call plastic. It can change. It mm -hmm. can mold. Even as we get older, there's still ability to learn new things. Right. And we call this neuroplasticity. It's mm -hmm. not really made out of plastic, but okay. certainly there's changes, of course, right. in brain chemistry, changes in brain size that come about from doing these new tasks. And puzzles are one way of doing that. Right. Now, I found in my practice that I've done computer interactive games. Mm -hmm. We've done computer interactive exercises right. where where individuals will actually do it with the computer and the computer will adjust its abilities to your abilities. Oh, okay. All right. So you don't have to be intimidated, intimidated necessarily. On the other hand, while this may make us feel good, doesn't the most recent science suggest it doesn't do any good right. whatsoever in trying to stave off the effects of Alzheimer's disease? Like everything in the medical community, there's always a debate. And you know, coffee is good one week and it's mm -hmm. bad the next week right. and it's good again the following okay. week. And there is a plethora. There is a whole a group of, of uh, research studies that have shown that brain training, cognitive training mm -hmm. is helpful in okay. maintaining memory. Now All the right. question is, does it prevent Alzheimer's? Ah. That's really the question that's okay. being studied. Right. And my feeling is that if it helps, if it helps you in your day-to-day -day life in maintaining brain function, right. then it's got to be a a no-brainer. It's got to be a good thing. The other thing that comes out in all of these studies, though, is while all of these kinds of activities may be admirable in some way or even and probably advisable, the thing in the long term that keeps us sharpest is our interpersonal relationships. Correct. Absolutely correct. And I tell this to patients all the time. I say, if you don't have the time to do the crossword or do the jumble or do Sudoku, you have to get out and have lunch with your friends. Go to a diner and have lunch. Have that social interaction. How many of us know our parents, grandparents who are spending time in the house, mm -hmm. watching television, not interacting with one another. Yeah. It's that interaction. By the way, that's another reason why I'm using this computerized interactive game called Cognifit right. at Cognifit.com. And it's useful because it interacts with the individual if he doesn't have the social doesn't network have the necessary. opportunity so to get out and about. Different than a crossword puzzle, which basically is just on paper. Right. If the difficulty of the challenge of the exercise can be adjusted, then that is an interaction that you're having with the computer. Obviously, a human interaction like we're having now is much more, is much preferable, but if you can't, that computer interaction is excellent. Well, I feel a lot smarter just having <laughs> had this conversation. Doctor, thank you very much. Thank you. Really do appreciate it. Alan Masaryk.